Okay then. <coughs> I've uh, got the Brocop Concept Elite. First 12 shots, putting over the Chrono half will be the uh, Day State uh, Range Master Sovereigns at 8.44 grains. weight pellets and I'll put the heavy pellet for it and if anything's going to send the rifle to the top of its performance it will be the day state field target pellet heavies at 10.25 grains and fire fire 12 of these now okay then this is the uh, Broke up Concept Elite using the Day State field target heavies at 10.25 grains. I don't think I've got anything to worry about the power here, it's uh, not powerful enough looking at that. Easy enough solved. And that's the end of the test. Okay then, so after the initial chronograph test, uh, the rifle is uh, well underpowered. Uh, if you look at the results on the chart I did, chart on the left is taken from uh, the Day State Range Master Sovereign, the weight 8.44 grains, and the average power was uh, 7.12 foot pounds. And then using the uh, day state heavy field target pellets, the average with those came out at 7.74 foot pounds. Uh, <clears throat> the rifles had nothing done to it, so it could just be down to uh, the seals uh, not working correctly. Uh, like uh, the breech seal, for instance, if that's missing or if it's damaged, that could uh, create a low power. But uh, yeah, I definitely need uh, all the seals changing, retuning up, and like I say, I'm going to regulate it as well. Uh, so we'll see, uh, we'll see how, how good I can make it in the end. Uh, but they are good rifles to shoot and very accurate. Uh, the barrels on these were fire rack barrels. That's what the uh, original Brocop company used to buy from uh, fire rack. Uh, not a loaf of wolfer. Uh, maybe they used some towards the end of the time, but uh, they did have a p partnership with Virac to do the barrels. So what I'll do now, I'm going to take the thing apart. Uh, I've got some uh, QD stuff to fit to this stock as well. Uh, so I'm going to finish this stock off, uh, take the rafter bits, get a service kit for the seals. Uh, and then start to uh, work on it uh, but the first thing I need to do is when the stock's off is uh, 
shoot all the air out of it so there's no air left in the cylinder and uh, remove the anti-tamper which I'll show you where that is and how to do it okay just need to remove the stop five millimeter okay as well. And uh, <coughs> make sure you put your, put your parts in a box or whatever so you don't lose it. So stop the move. This is a uh, four mil on me. Just that off. <coughs> so now I can see I've got the uh, rifle and cylinder, and the only anti tamper on these is a little brass cap at the back there. Uh, looking at it, somebody's always already done a punch hole in it. So what you basically do, you drill through that, uh, you take the, uh, the cap out so it can get to the uh, allen screw. So you've got an allen screw under there and an allen screw there. That way you get the block out, making sure you're keeping pressure on the back plate because that's under tension. So when that comes out, that back will come off. But uh, what I need to do now is make sure that it's uh, totally empty of any air. So yeah, that'll be my next uh, part of the video. Uh okay then, <coughs> I don't need to drill. Uh, do a punch hole because there's already one bend on it. So. Okay, I've done the drilling, <clears throat> uh, couldn't get the shreds to work, so I've drilled enough so I can see that to screw, so I'm hoping now that as I unscrew it, to lift it up. get it out anyway once it's off so you can push it from the other side hopefully
and a ball bearing. See that's all the tension, that's the armor spring. on the block there that you need to get out so the hammer can slide back that's that screw you can slide that back and there's a the hammer the adjustment on these is all made by this there look if you can see that that's the hammer and there's a screw there the further out it is the less power because there's less travel that's the locking up that weren't locked off and then <clears throat> the further in it is gives you more travel and more power but, uh, that's about where they should be. About there, like that. That's the actual uh, hammer's in not too bad a shape, actually. <coughs> Alright. See that. Is that. Okay, so we've still got the problem <coughs> of the end cap not coming out. <coughs> So if you can drill through to unscrew it and get it off the block, once it is off, all you need to do is put it on the hard surface. And just tap the, uh, the screw to lock it out that way. Time for and now removed. And that is it. Okay then. <clears throat> so I've got the hammer out and everything. I'm going to take the block off of the cylinder now. Oh, in the breach area. Just there, there's a little screw. And it's a T10 screw, it's not an Allen screw, it's like a star thing, but it's a T10. So, that needs to come out. And then looking at the other end, the only thing really holding it on now is a sleeve. Uh, <clears throat> and that's got three Allen screws in it and that needs coming off. Uh, quite sure these are, could be a three. Two and off. That can be awkward. So again, actually, what's that? That's a two. Yeah. One. Two. Probably don't need to get them all the way out. Just move to slightly it off. Okay. 
So that is uh, pan out a bit. That is a block and barrel off. That is the thread adapter to the barrel that's on. That's an half inch adapter. It's about the uh, that holds the the shroud on, which doesn't do anything. There's no baffles in it, so they, they are loud unless you can uh, put a silencer on. But yeah, that's the adapter there that would go on there. And that adapts it to the half inch UNF thread. Might as well keep that on so I don't lose it. Uh, the actual barrels, I've been told that on, on the Brocox the epoxy resin in. Uh, now, <clears throat> what I did think could be causing problems with the power issues would be the breech o ring which is in there. So it'd be a right sod to replace, but it needs doing. So when I get a seal kit, I've got to get the one out if it's in there. And replace it. Uh, <clears throat> uh, an interesting thing: if the bolt, the bolts on these are dead small. Don't like them, to be honest. So what I've done on the other Brocock, you'll find that the Falcon Prairie rifles are basically the same thing. Uh, so the the bolt off the Falcon Prairie will fit this. Uh, so what we could do now. Take the uh, the bolt handle off and the uh, get the actual uh, pellet probe out as well. But uh, there's no there's no O-ring on the pellet probe. It's a basic breech seal probe like you get on the, the current day states and Brocox. Uh, so that is that. I'll just put this, uh, just get this out to start off with that. That's it. So that's the barrel band. Which one are these? The bottom one. That's the one that's called out. Let's put the <coughs> two millimeter. There's three of those on this. So put that back in there so I don't lose it. Very small things. Right. On here you've got the, uh, if you look at that, uh, if you can see it there, bring it place up to the camera. It's a dust cover there. There's a little look down there, it's another screw. So that gets you your actual, uh, oh, what do you call it, dust cover off. And then the actual inlet valve, which this one is, should unscrew. Normally long threads on these. Got 
two O-rings on it, I think. There we go. I've actually got three. It's got one at the top. One there and one there. So that's the inlet valve. Now, uh, you can use two long nose pliers if you need to. But you unscrew that, there's a spring on there. And that's holding the, the valve stem in. There's your manometer. <coughs> so that's that's that part of that. And then on this end you've got your transfer port there. That goes down into the exhaust valve uh, and comes up. There's another O-ring there and that's your transfer port. So, <clears throat> now some tuners, what they'll do, they'll, they'll open up the transfer port a bit more to let more air through, but when you've then got to be careful by making the transfer port hole bigger, makes it more efficient, so it uh, gives you more power, so you detune the spring and things like that. Uh, there's the actual transfer port itself, uh, and this is a bit that you drill out so I'm not sure how big that is, it's probably one and a half to two millimetres but an half a millimetre difference at this point can add another five foot pounds to, to a rifle so you've really got to be careful when you do it oh, that's quite a big, big uh, that's, that's a four so there's one on either side of that and that should be what's holding the uh, exhaust valve in so there's not too much to them really it's on that side I'm on this side now the difference between the elite model which this one is and the normal concepts and contours is on the elites the cylinder is wider I think it's 30 millimeter diameter I'm not sure if that's the outside diameter but it's bigger so it gives you more shots all right so that in theory should shove out now use a organ dowel to do that I would think That's all that's in there now, is the actual uh, exhaust valve. And you can see the uh, transfer port at the top. Now there, at the top, transfer port. That's for the attaching the valve. Right. Size that is. That's only a two, I think. Yeah. So what I'm going to do? Make, make sure I've, I've got that. So it's not going to move. Basically, what happens? You unscrew. The Allen bolt that's going through there. Then you unscrew that. And that allows you then, what you do, sweep back through there. If you saw that. And what you do now, I'll try and hold the probe in place. We go that along. Someone just fell out there. But, uh, and that comes out like that and that was a washer that came out that goes between the actual bolt and that 
okay and then at the bottom there you've got a little screw and what that what that does on the actual bolt probe that cocks the hammer a little thing there uh, there's a little uh, notch in the hammer and it, it goes inside that and when you cock it that pulls the hammer back so that'll need unscrewing next Yeah, there's another little thing that's catching it, I think. Probably be springs and ball bearings under that. Another little screw there, look. And that catches on the cocking arm, which is here. And there's a little ball bearing there as well, look. see there's also a spring the ball bearing there so you've really got to be careful Be okay in there. But I don't know, I'm going to take it out anyway, so I don't want to lose it. Okay. Right. 
that box is all for this the block So that's the rifle stripped down. Just got to get the valve uh, the out of the uh, cylinder. Okay, then this is the exhaust valve that I got out. Uh, what I've got here, we've got the two uh, bolts either side that actually uh, hold it in place. And they just go through the cylinder walls. So I have seen on some of the forums somebody suggested that these weren't held in place but they are there they're actually held in place by those two uh, bolts there and then uh, once it's inserted into the cylinder what we've got <clears throat> you've got the standard o-ring just there and then there's another rubber ring there and what happens when you pull it in you actually it's got a, like a flat head uh, top so you can put a screwdriver in what you do you tighten that up when it's in 
and that collar there pushes against the rubber on that and that creates a seal within the cylinder as well it actually makes it expand a bit so uh, you'll take you probably take these out and you'll think I'm pushing it but it's not going anywhere and I'll put it down to that if it's, so what you need to do you need to turn that anti-clockwise to take the pressure off the, the actual ring and then it will shove backwards outside of the cylinder but uh, basically I'll take it apart so you can see how it is So the, the cap comes off. There's two washers in there, two spacers. There's a the cap there, and there's the O-ring that expands. There we go. Now the the valve uh, stem is just here, so when you hammer, it's that it shoves it in opens the, uh, the valve up for the air to come into the uh, transfer port so <clears throat> we've got a spring there and that had got spacers on it to put tension on those springs because you can adjust the, uh, the, the strength of the uh, spring by uh, packing it and that's that's how you do it so if you want to uh, make the hammer work harder to to open the valve you just pack that out uh, so that's the valve stem pretty clean really uh, that black part there that is the collar that seals the actual uh, valve uh, when you've got a lot of compressed air in the air is pushing that way and the only way to open that it's the hammer to open it by pushing that way so basically that, that's all that's in it that's all the valves are made of it's quite simple really uh, so there we go that is the uh, the exhaust valve on the uh, Brocock Concept Elite uh, now all the Brocock Concepts and I would imagine the Falcon Prayers the valves will all be very similar to this the way they're made and how they fit it's a standard way how the valves are made on all PCPs really uh, so I've just got to wait for the uh, seal kit to come so I can place the o-ring on that although it looks okay anyway uh, transfer port just there, there's a little o-ring in that uh, I did measure these uh, by using a, a drill bit so the actual transfer port hole in the valve on the block and on the barrel are two and a half millimeters for the 177. Uh, now I could drill them out to three millimeters, but I think as it stands, I'll leave them as they are. And what I'll probably do is put put all the new seals on, put the rifle back together, uh, and do some testing, tune it up to where it needs to be, and we'll see what the consistency is like, uh, and then. I probably will fit uh, either a lane or an ultros regulator to it. Uh, see if we can get it more consistent than it, it will be anyway. But they are pretty consistent. So there we go. That is the uh, the exhaust valve for the uh, Braycock Concept Elite. Uh, I will now show you the tool I made to get the thing out. Uh, so all you need, basically, you need a long, really extra long screwdriver because the reach you're going to need is around 20 inches uh, so you need, you need to make sure you either got a long enough screwdriver or you make a tool up to do it and uh, I actually made a tool up to do it and the way I did it I, uh, I used an old file I made sure it was uh, with a grinder I made sure I grinded it down enough for, the, for it to fit the slot and also that the sides weren't too wide that there was going to uh, damage the cylinder and then I pack that out with uh, some tape just to make sure so I'll now show you the uh, what I came up with but uh, anything will do as long as you can uh, release uh, the actual screw on that 
Okay then, so this is what I came up with. Just a basic uh, file. You can see I grinded it down. So that was nice and flat. It basically just fits in there. And I think the handler I've got on it was off an old uh, internal uh, windscreen uh, cleaner. I just took the end off, drilled all through the file and through that, put a couple of uh, bolts through it. And obviously you can see I packed the tape up. Uh, that was turning around initially so I just basically drilled that and bolted it as well. So uh, you're going to need something at least that long so you can turn it and then shove it out. I mean once, once you've uh, turned it anti-clockwise, put uh, release the tension on the A-ring, you can use a dowel or something to push it out but initially you'll need uh, something to get to that. So if you've not got anything, you've just got to think up something to do it. So uh, there we go. So that's the part I made up for getting the valve out.